Well, the global economic crisis uh, continues along and we're finding that traditional funders are a little bit wary of going into new markets. So what do those who are in need of funding do under the current climate? Well, we'll get a perspective now from Julian Jackson, who heads up the Africa Group of Norton Rose. Thank you so much, Julian, for your time today. Pleasure. Is this an unprecedented um, crisis? It started in 2007, 2008, and people felt that, you know, after a few years, if you look at economic cycles, we'll start to see a recovery, but it looks like we're in double dip mode at the moment. I think we are in double dip mode, although the effects on Africa have been quite mixed. I think that, funnily enough, the debt crisis in Europe has also meant that a lot of European money such as it is, yeah. is looking for other places to go. The little bit that's left. The yeah. little bit that's left. So banks are still looking for, for opportunities. Lending is more conservative, and I think that's the problem for Africa, that Africa is still seen as a high-risk destination for the, for the most part, mm -hmm. and therefore it's much more difficult to attract good lending to African projects, and African projects have to be all the stronger to attract that fund, that, that money these days. The one issue Africa's always had is that we've always been seen as almost one country. Therefore, we're not the separate entities that we truly are with different challenges, different levels of development. How can we sell that story, that we are, there are parts of a whole here? Absolutely right. I mean, there are 54 jurisdictions in Africa, each of them completely different. Uh, each has different strengths and weaknesses or different assets and different issues that need to be contended with. And I think experienced funders, experienced business people have a much better understanding of that. And at the moment, again, post the financial crisis, we're seeing far more people sort of having a look around, mm -hmm. thinking of Africa as a, as a single concept and not appreciating that Africa is very different depending on, on where you go. And what the more experienced people are finding is that if you know your market, you understand what you're trying to do, you can do extremely well and, and, and uh, start some very successful projects if you know what you're doing. There's a lot of talk about South-South cooperation. Um, we know about BRICS, of course, and uh, Africa joining that uh, under South Africa, for example. But does that translate into funders from those countries starting to take a closer look at the continent, or are we still largely dependent on traditional funders? Um, it's an interesting question. I think probably there is a real change in the format. I mean, what we're finding is that Australia is very heavily invested in the um, resources sector in Africa across the board. Uh, at a recent conference in Perth, I was amazed to discover there are 240 Australian companies active in, in Africa, uh, doing some huge resources projects all over the world. And an interesting comment made by Australians was that it's very difficult to find infrastructure in Australia to extract minerals for some, from some of the places where you find them. And therefore, they're drawn to Africa mm -hmm. because they can see resources which they can extract. And there is some infrastructure, which is a little bit surprising to us yeah. as Africans, <laughs> thinking that this is the continent that people say doesn't have infra infrastructure. Yeah. So there's an Australian play. Uh, Chinese funding uh, is certainly uh, you know, gaining momentum with every month that passes, more and more huge deals are being funded by Chinese in circumstances where um, there really wouldn't have been alternative sources of funding available. Um, perhaps some distance behind the Chinese, but very significant are Indian financiers. So more and more Indian companies are looking uh, for projects across the board in, in, in Africa, coal, steel, but also power and all sorts of associated projects. So India is, is, is becoming a real player in the continent too. Yeah, what I find is that we also diversifying where that money is going into. There was a big focus, of course, on minerals. We are a resource rich um, continent, but telecommunications, for example, is starting to pick up as well. Very true, private equity funds specifically focused on infrastructure. I think another play that's, that's probably taking place at the moment is that as traditional sources of, uh, of finance have uh, have become more and more difficult. Um, people are looking for, for other solutions, and I think one of the solutions that people are looking at, particularly in the resources and infrastructure sectors, are looking at the users of infrastructure as funding the infrastructure build that needs to take place. So mm -hmm. the, the guys who want to use the railway line, uh, the guys who want to use the port are the guys now um, actually putting equity into those projects to make them work, and that's, that's a trend that we're certainly seeing across the continent as well. What questions are these funders asking themselves before they decide, fine, we're going to go into South Africa, we're going to go into the DRC or, or wherever, Congo Brazzaville? 
I think the first question is, is there a, a project which is viable? So if I've got a mining project, can I get the ore out of that place to take it to the market where I want to sell it? So that's the very sort of first level of fundamental question that needs to be answered. And very often it's quite a difficult one to, to answer because um, big projects will often need power. There may not be the power to supply that project. Um, if one looks at, at Mozambique at the moment, for example, there are huge natural resource opportunities in Mozambique, but there are also massive challenges in terms of the infrastructure. So mm -hmm. even if you have a mining uh, opportunity, can you power the mine? Even if you find a mine and you can power it, can you get the ore out? So those are some of the, the key challenges. I think the second question, that if there is a fundamental f uh, viability of a project, is uh, probably around stability. Do I believe that uh, I can have a contracting structure which allows me to plan for the future for the long term. So if I have a, a five-year debt, you know, is the project going to be the same in five years? That's much easier to answer than if I have a 20-year debt tenor and I need to make sure yeah. that, that the project can last as long as that. So that's where stability is a key issue for investors. You're going to have to leave it there. Thanks for your time. So it looks like um, the public sector, our politicians and our leaders have to um, bring in their side here as well if you're going to continue to grow um, the interest that we have from international funders.